Oh, jump to the left. Jump to the left. Kids don't like it. Never now make sure. Either. Okay, we're gonna teach it to you. But kids, you guys who know it, make sure you're not jumping into your brothers and sisters or into the dog or in the furniture. Exactly. All right. All right. Do that. All right. Do so ready? Okay. On the count of three. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Jump to the left and jump to the right and sing to the Lord with all your might. Raise your hands and wave them in the air and spread the good news everywhere. Our God loves you and me. His love has set us free. Let's all share with everyone and tell them what he's done. Jump to the left and jump to the right and sing to the Lord with all your might. Raise your hands and wave them in the air and spread the good news everywhere. God will forgive our sins. We can be born again. Everybody needs to know everywhere we go. Jump to the left and jump to the right and sing to the Lord with all your might. Raise your hands and wave them in the air and spread the good news everywhere. Jump to the left and jump to the right and sing to the Lord with all your might. Raise your hands and wave them in the air and spread the good news everywhere. Spread the good news everywhere. Spread the good news everywhere. Good, news everywhere. good job, good job, guys. Good job. Good. We're oh, doing that. That's pretty good. Right. Let's, yeah. see what, let's see what comes next. Uh, Mr. Turtle Man. Mr. Man. Oh, Thy this Word. Is thy Word. This is a great song. song. This is a great song. Oh, yeah, this is a newer song for you guys and for some of the kids, but we'll learn it throughout this, this month or so. All right, so <laughs> Thy Word. So all you workers, Whoa. help us out there. Kids sing along, parents sing along. Ready? One, two, three. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid, and I think I've lost my way, still you're there right beside me. Nothing will I fear, as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. All right, great job, great yeah. job, kids, yeah. great job. Yeah. All right, uh, I'm sure Mr. Mr. Uh, Talman has something else for us. Mr. Talman. Hey, good morning, good morning, kids. Good morning, kids. Good morning, good morning Sally. Good morning. good morning. Welcome back to Children's Church. Mm -hmm. For some of you, you're back in person, and uh, hopefully, you can see us all there. And some of you are still here online, or you know, maybe they're doing both. Oh, maybe. maybe I mean, hi, kids. Wow. Either way. Hi, kids. Either way. And over the past few weeks, uh, we've been in quarantine, but. Uh, some weeks ago, we started learning about you know, creation and everything. Remember, yeah. we talked about Adam, and he was naming the animals. So, uh, what are we what are we talking about today? What are we today got? we are learning that God loves us and will never give up on us. Oh, that's good. God will always be there for us. That's a great lesson to learn. A great lesson to learn. And the Bible verse that we have that we're going to memorize during these weeks is Psalm one nineteen one hundred five. Psalm one nineteen verse one hundred five, where it says, "Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path." That's a good verse to remember. Yeah, yeah. Kids, that is talking about the Bible being what you should use to help light your way on the Christian walk. In this world that's full of darkness. Yeah, you know what? You know what? A good Bible story that helps us to understand this story is the story of Noah. God Ooh. could have wiped out sin by wiping out the whole world, but instead he chose Noah's family to help him start over. God loved us too much to give up on us entirely. That's right, that's right. No matter what we do, he will always welcome us home and forgive us. Oh, that's so, great. Uh, why don't, yeah, it is, it mm -hmm. is. So why don't we go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll have a song. Ooh. So for you guys out here, it is pre-recorded songs this week again, but next time it will be uh, songs that we did all together when yeah. we can get back together with Chris and Josh and Max and everybody else. And All right, all right. So Mr. Title Man. Mr. Title Man. Mr. Title Man.
Oh, sermon and shoes. Sermon and shoes. Sermon and shoes. This is great. So kids, remember, you have to do the, the flip-flops and the, the sneakers and the shoes and boots because uh, we don't have feet. And didn't Josh no. figure out how to do I this? can stomp, though. Yeah, Josh can stomp. Quick. Josh thinks he can, see, he thinks he can, but because his, you know, his idol is Kermit the Frog, who has legs, not like us. That's not true. I have no idol. What about Billy Jesus. Idol? Oh, no, all right. You see, can. now he's getting all Sunday school -y. All right, let's sing the song. Ready? One, two, three. Do you know, oh, Christian, you're a sermon in shoes? Do you know, oh, Christian, you're a sermon in shoes? Jesus counts upon you to spread the gospel news. So walk it and talk it, a sermon in shoes. Do you know, oh, Christian, you're a sermon in sneakers? Do you know, oh, Christian, you're a sermon in sneakers? Jesus counts upon you to spread the gospel news, so live it and give it a sermon in sneakers. Do you know, oh Christian, you're a sermon in flip-flops? Do you know, oh Christian, you're a sermon in flip-flops? Jesus counts upon you to spread the gospel news, so teach it and preach it a sermon in flip-flops. Do you know, oh Christian, you're a sermon in boots? Do you know, oh Christian, you're a sermon in boots? Jesus counts upon you to spread the gospel news, so know it and show it a sermon in boots. Good job, good job. Yeah, that's that's good. Good. Oh, yeah. I, I did miss my words up, I forgot, because I don't have legs. And I thought Josh was going to, he said he can stomp, and he didn't. He, he did, did stomp. He didn't, and then he kind of did it. Josh, do it again, do it again. All right. I thought it was like All a group right. thing. All right. Well, let's see what we got next. I think I think we have a skit. Maybe oh. we have a skit, Mr. Oh, man. Oh, man. Hi, boys and girls. Have any of you ever helped your mom or dad make brownies? Brownies are fairly simple to make if you follow the directions. Let's see if Ricky can help me make some brownies. Oh, oh yeah, I, I, yeah. I'd love to help you. I love yeah, making like brownies. brownies yes, okay, so what do I get to get first? Uh, you gotta get a bowl. Oh, uh, okay, let me go get a bowl. Uh. <laughs> Alright, right, next, okay, you gotta... Okay, I got the bowl. Well, okay, I got the bowl. Well, you have to put it down to pour the brownie mix in. Oh, uh, alright, put the bowl down. Okay. 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 So okay. now you pour the brownie the mix bowl's in. Right here. Oh, brownie mix. Uh, mm -hmm. brownie mix. Mm -hmm. You got it? Don't make a mess, Ricky. Oh, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm Don't. Oh, I got it. I got the brownie mix. You got the brownie mix? Uh, oh, oh, um. Um, you. Well, I guess you could have made an even bigger mess. Um, so next. Next, I need you to. Ricky, are you alright down there? Oh! This has happened to me before when I made. Ah! Okay, right, what else do we need? What else, yeah, what, else, what else do we need? Um, you uh, need to crack uh, some eggs into uh, it, add them to egg. the bowl. You want me to get an egg? Okay. Yes. Uh, egg. Uh, you got the uh, eggs? Got, we had all the stuff laid out. Okay. I got I got the egg. Be gentle with I that, it. it's very breakable. I got it, I got it. Okay. Crack, crack it, crack it into the bowl. Yes, crack, crack it into the bowl. Uh, okay, did, um... No, I didn't get it on me. I didn't get it on me. You didn't get it I on me, but that's, um... A lot of eggshells uh, in there. Uh, anyway, so oh, let's continue oh, on. Next, we need to add oh, the oil. Oh, oh. Ooh. I'm sorry, the what? Don't sneeze in the oil. Oh, I won't. The what? Add oil? some oil to oil. the bowl. Oil. Oh, I got some more. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, don't drop it. <coughs> there we okay, go. I put oil in it. That, I put that didn't go too <sighs> badly. Oh, oh, now, oh. we need to add some water. Uh, water? Yeah. <sighs> Ricky, don't sneeze in the uh, food. Okay. Sneeze that way. Ah! Um. Uh, water. Are you ready to add the water? Let me get water. There you go. Oh, oh my. Oh goodness. All right. Water. All right. Now we need to add all of the water. All right. All, all the water. Um. Oh my, okay. Yeah, you got okay. it. I got it. I got it. That's a, that's a lot of water. Let's, let me let me double check the measurements here. Oh no! Wait, wait, Ricky. I made what? That's too what? much water! We got too much water on our brownie mix! The, there's, you told me to put water! You told me to put water! The brownies will have to come up with all the water! Watch you! Watch you! Oh, 
Oh, no, what? we ruined what? the brownies. Oh, what? What? All right, there's nothing we oh. can do. Oh. Let's um, let's oh. throw the mix out and start what? over. Oh, oh man, what a waste. Oh, okay, okay. Well, uh, so what's this have to do with today's lesson, by the way, Sally? Oh. Well, in today's story, got chocolate all over my face. You do have chocolate okay. all what? over your face. In today's story, in today's story, God picked one family that loved Him, put them in two of every animal inside a boat, oh. and spared them oh. while He destroyed the oh. whole world with a flood. I, I, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh. Sorry. Oh, I see. I see. Like a cook who, uh, who ruined the who ruined the brownie batter, God chose to start all over. Yeah, but God didn't throw out the whole mix now, did he? Uh, no, 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 he didn't. He loved us so much, he loved us so much, boys and girls, that he chose to use Noah's family to continue what Adam and Eve started. After the flood, he made a promise that he would never destroy the whole world again by flood. Aha, aha, that's right. Instead, he would make a way to save us from sin. That's right. Oh. God didn't have to stick with creation. He could have made a whole new world and a whole new people. God started over with Noah because he loves us. And instead of starting over and over, he made a way to save us from sin once and for all. Gee, gee, that's swell. Now, now I get what we're going to be talking about. Yeah. Too. Oh, oh, ah, 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 uh -oh. ah, uh -oh. ah, 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 Oh, oh, this is oh, horrible. No, this, this is... Oh, I do I do this every time I'm baking? Oh, Sally, come help me, please. Come I need a tissue. Come on, Ricky. Oh, jump to the left. Oh, okay. Okay. Here's how I like I front. Never now, make sure. Either. Okay, we're going to teach it to you. But kids, you guys who know it, make sure you're not jumping into your brothers and sisters or into no, the no, dog no, or in no. the furniture. Exactly. Oh, all right. All right. Do that. All right. Do so it. ready? Okay, on the count of three. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Jump to the left and jump to the right and sing to the Lord with all your might. Raise your hands and wave them in the air and spread the good news everywhere. Our God loves you and me. His love has set us free. Let's all share with everyone and tell them what he's done. Jump to the left and jump to the right and sing to the Lord with all your might. Raise your hands and wave them in the air and spread the good news everywhere. God will forgive our sins. We can be born again. Everybody needs to know everywhere we go. Jump to the left and jump to the right and sing to the Lord with all your might. Raise your hands and wave them in the air and spread the good news everywhere. Jump to the left and jump to the right and sing to the Lord with all your might. Raise your hands and wave them in the air and spread the good news everywhere. Spread the good news everywhere. Spread the good news everywhere. Good job, good job, guys. Good job. Let's keep that. Let's see what, let's see what comes next. Uh, Mr. Gentleman. Gentleman. No, 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 no. Set this up. Get the zoom. Sorry, what are you up to? Oh, oh, hi, Sally. I'm getting ready to talk to my grandma. I really miss seeing her because of all this COVID and quarantine stuff. So I, I'm going to set up a video call with her. So I, uh, you know what? Oh, hey, hey. Oh. Do you want to stay here and meet her? Oh, sure, Ricky. That'd be nice. Oh, okay. But you know, um, Sally, don't do anything that would embarrass me or anything, or, or try to. You know, try to sound smart when you're talking to her. You know, it's my grandmother, and I want to impress her with my good choice and friends. Say something, say something good, like uh, something that won't be uh, boring or anything like that. Okay? Well, I'll definitely try, Ricky. All right. Perfect, I can tell perfect. her what that today we're gonna teach to the kids that God will always be there for them. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Like my promise cookies. Yes, sirree, Bob. They are the ticket. Oh, oh, hi, Grandma. I remember those cookies and how good they tasted last time I visited. They were mighty tasty. Promise cookies? What are those? Oh, oh, Grandma, this is my friend Sally. Oh, hello there, dearie. Promise cookies are the cookies I make every time any one of my grand rats come to visit. I mix my batch with a whole lot of Grandma's love. And I'll always be there for your homemade cookies. I'm sure you would. 
but my cookies aren't nowhere near as good as the promises that God made to those who are his children and obey him. What's that? Oh, sorry, Grandma. Sally's always asking questions, and I try to educate her, but sometimes she doesn't get it. <laughs> That's okay, dear. Asking questions is how we learn. Well, Sally, the promises in the Bible says God will never leave us or let us down. Wow, that's great, Grandma Rat! And furthermore, God says he will help us. No one can pluck us out of his hands. Who would want to leave his hands? Oh, some do, some do, youngins. Remember the story of the prodigal son? Do you remember that one, little Ricky? Oh, 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 yeah, it was about that little boy who left home and later found out that the grass wasn't greener on the other side. That's right, that's right. But when he came to his senses, he found out that his daddy always loved him. When he was coming home, he could see his daddy running as fast as he could run with open arms to give his son a big hug. I wonder what that day was like. Well, I'm sure that his daddy made a nice meal, had a big party, and made him a big old batch of promised cookies himself, made with tears and hugs and kisses. You think he made promised cookies? Full of God's promises, just like I make my cookies. His brother was pretty mad when his father forgave him. It was no matter. His father loved both sons. That hasn't changed. The lesson is that God will never leave us. Sometimes we leave him, but God is always ready to open his arms when we come back to him. There are some things left up to us. That's right, that's right, youngin. And if we obey him, he will be there whenever we are. Promise fulfilled. Prayers answered. Our steps planned by God. That's the way I want my life to be. Promises fulfilled, and a full stomach of my promise cookies, I bet. Youngins, that's why we need to read our Bibles, to see what God says to us. You know, Psalm 119.105 reminds me of this. It tells us that where it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. That's a great verse. Remember, kids, that God was always there for us. Well, thanks for coming and talking to us, Grandma. When COVID is all over, can I come over to your house for a cookie treat? You betcha. You betcha. You are. Come on by for some of those cookies. All right. Bye, youngins. You have a great day. It was so great talking to you. All right. I like your Grandma, Ricky. She's a very wise woman. Be because she makes cookies? <laughs> no, because she knows that God loves all of us uh -oh. and will never give up on us, even though we might give up on Him. Yeah, we as uh, sinners sometimes forget that. Oh, oh, you should come with me when I go visit her. You'll love her cookies. They're made with real cheese. Oh, that'd be really nice. Yeah. Wait, made with cheese? Oh, yeah. Nice, fragrant Lindberger cheese with Parmesan chips in it. Oh, so, oh, so good. Uh, yeah, let's, let's go um, and we can plan that trip when this is all over. Great. All right, that'd be great. Oh, Thy Word. Thy Word. This is a great, this is a great song. song. This is a great song. Yeah, this is a newer song for you guys and for some of the kids, but we'll learn it throughout this, this month or so. All right, so <laughs> Thy Word. So all you workers, help us out there. Kids, sing along. Parents, sing along. Ready? One, two, three. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid, and I think I've lost my way, still you're there right beside me. Nothing will I fear, as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy 
thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. All right, great job, great job, kids, great job. All right, uh, I'm sure Mr. Mr. Uh, Talman has something else for us. Mr. Talman. Coming soon to a theater near you, it's the sequel to last week's smash hit movie. It's the Bible 2, Voyage of the Wacky Ark, featuring that great Bible hero, Noah. Ah. Uh. Hello, hello, and uh, thank you for that introduction. Uh, I'm sorry, did you say Wacky Ark? That's right! This movie tells the tale of the wackiest ship on the sea! Wait, wait, wacky? What, what does that word mean? What does this mean, wacky? It means silly, funny, outrageous. It's the downright kookiest story in the book. Kooky? Kooky, now wait just a minute here. See Noah get the call from God to build the ark. Noah, you must build an ark. No, uh, what? Uh, oh, uh, okay, Lord, I will. But I, but I think we're doing the wrong thing, telling the kids that you know. See uh, uh -oh. Noah's sons and their wacky adventures building the ark. Oh, what's what? that, Dad? We needed gopher wood. What? Oh, I'm sorry, I brought skunk wood. What? No wonder it stings. <laughs> Cut it out, Ham. Cut it out, Ham. This is no time to be. Oh. Ham? Oh boy, I was gonna say a smart aleck. You have to admit, I cut up like a ham. <laughs> oh, oh no, this is so messed up. So messed up here. See, uh -oh. Noah tried to make sure that he gets one male and one female of every animal. Oh, okay, yeah. Hey, Dad. Oh, no, he how did. do you tell if a snake is a boy or a girl? Well, I don't know, Ham. Well, you better figure it out. We don't have room for all of these guys. Ah, that snakes everywhere. Oh, oh, oh boy. Woo! Oh boy. Uh, uh, hey, 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 get back here. Oh, oh, man. And you don't want to miss the wacky seasick adventures as seasick? Noah, his family, and thousands of animals thousands? take a half-year ocean voyage. Oh, Dad. Oh, oh, man. I think I'm going to be sick. All right, that's it. Stop it. Stop this right now. Stop it. Stop it right now. Stop this right now. What's the matter, Pop? Look, I got no problem with our story being a movie, but this is no wacky adventure. This is a story of heartbreak and hard work and tragedy. And who? Ham, get serious. I know it looks like we had a, a cute floating zoo, but outside the ship, people died. God punished the whole world for their sins, and he only spared us, our family. Well, that's depressing. Well, yes, yes it is. Why would God do that anyway? Don't you see? Sin was destroying God's creation. God could have wiped the whole earth out. Just boom, gone. But instead, he spared us so we could start fresh with a family that loved him. This is an amazing story about a bowl filled with animals, but it's not a wacky one. It's a story of judgment and of grace. If God didn't choose us to build this ark, well, that would have been the end of the whole world. I'm sorry if that's not what your movie-going friends want to see, Mr. Narrator. It, it's okay. It's a story we all need to see. Yeah, I guess so. All right, let's go get this art done, I guess. Tam, come on. All right. Oh, boy. Oh, his banner over me is love. His banner song. over me is love. Okay. This is a good song. We will help you guys learn it, and we'll mm -hmm. sing it with the kids. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Jesus is the rock of my salvation, his banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation, his banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation, his banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. Okay. Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. His banner over me is love. Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. His banner over me is love. Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. His banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. Good
good job. Good job, yeah. everybody. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a good song. It's a good song. All right, Mr. Tyler Man probably has something else for us. Man. Man. What's next? What's next? Hey kids, welcome back to Children's Church and Talk Time with Pastor Jeff. I hope you had a good time with Ricky and, and uh, Sally. And if you were live with the rest of the puppets, if you're watching this both online and live. So uh, I wanted to go back to a, a few weeks ago. We started a new curriculum while we're still together in Children's Church. I know I ended up on quarantine, so we are back live in person now. So if you want to come uh, next Sunday, just sign up online, have your parents sign up. So a few weeks ago, we opened our, our series on the greatest story ever told, which is the Bible. And we started with a look at the very beginning of the story with the Garden of Eden, right? We learned who we are. We're a people created in God's image, right? We also learned that we are sinners, uh, people who've rebelled against God. And that rebellion is called sin, which is why we're called sinners. And sin separated us from God. And as our story continues this week, things have gone from bad to worse. Uh, the sin that entered the world through Adam and Eve became rampant. It just more and more increased. It grew. And as more and more people filled the earth, the sin problem grew worse and worse. And soon, almost everyone was living in sin, except for one man. And that man's name was Noah. And just about everybody knows the story of Noah, right? Noah was a good man, a righteous man with three sons. And he was called by God to build a boat large enough to hold two of every animal on earth so that God could wash away the sin of the world and start again with Noah's own family. So I'm going to read part of that story to you right now. You can find this in Genesis chapter 7. So if you want to turn there, you can read along with me, or you can just listen as I read Genesis chapter 7, starting right in verse 1, okay? All right. Uh, so this is Genesis chapter 7. Then the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. You shall take with you seven of each every clean animal, a male and his female, two each of animals that are unclean, a male and his female, also seven each of the birds of the air, male and female, to keep the species alive on the face of all the earth. For after seven more days, I will cause it to rain on the earth forty days and forty nights, and I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I have made. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters were on earth. So Noah, with his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives, went into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Of clean animals, of animals that are unclean, of birds, and everything that creeps on the earth, two by two they went into the ark of Noah, male and female, as God commanded Noah. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were on the earth. And the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month. On that day all the fountains of the great deep were broken up, and all the windows of heaven were open, and the rain was on the earth forty days and forty nights. On the very same day Noah and Noah's sons Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of Noah's sons, with all of them entered the ark, they and every beast after its kind, all cattle after their kind, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth after its kind, and every bird after its kind, every bird of every sort. And they went into the ark to Noah, two by two, of all flesh, and which is the breath of life. So that those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. Now the flood was on the earth forty days. The waters increased and lifted up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters prevailed and greatly increased on the earth, and the ark moved about on the surface of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly on the earth, and all the high hills under the whole heaven were covered. The waters prevailed fifteen cubits upward, and the mountains were covered. And all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds and cattle and beasts, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, and every man, all in whose nostrils was breath of the spirit of life. All that was on dry land died. So he destroyed all living things which were on the face of the ground, both man and cattle, creeping thing and bird of the air. They were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remained alive. And the waters prevailed on the earth 150 days. So as I read that story from the Bible, it's not really a, a, a happy, funny story, right? Like, uh, like the narrator is trying to make it sound like. The story of Adam and Eve told us that we are sinners separated from God. 
the story of Noah's Ark makes it very clear how seriously God takes sin. The people on earth had become so sinful that God saw no chance of saving them. It had to make God very sad to see the people he created ruining the beautiful world he made for them with their sin. So God decided he would do something about it. He would wash away the sins of the world by washing away the sinful people who lived on it. But God didn't wash everyone away, right? God knew that Noah was a good man, a righteous man, who feared God. Now Noah wasn't perfect and neither were his sons. God knew that if he spared Noah, sin would still be in the world. Noah and his sons would pass on their sinful nature from generation to generation, but God loved his creation so much he couldn't give up on them entirely. God could have wiped out everyone. He could have wiped out sin by wiping out mankind. Instead, he chose one family to help him start fresh. He chose not to give up on us, and he made a plan to save us from sin once and for all. And we all struggle with sin every day. We're tempted by you know, pressure from our friends to do the wrong thing, whether at school or out on the playground or at home. We're tempted by our own selfishness to take things that aren't ours, right? Or to lie or to go our own way. Sin is selfish and it's very destructive. Sin may not always hurt other people, but it always, always hurts God, which means it hurts you. But here's the good news that we can take from Noah. No matter what we do, no matter how far away we stray from God, God still loves us. God made a promise after the flood never to give up on us again. He put a rainbow in the sky to remind us of that promise. And he sent his son Jesus to die for us so he could wash away our sins. Jesus told a story about a rebellious son. And I'm sure you all know that story. It's the tale of the prodigal son. You heard Grandma Rat talk about it, right? And the story, a young man takes his inheritance and, and squanders it all on wild living. And after wasting all that money and hitting rock bottom, the boy decided to return home and beg forgiveness from his father. Before he could utter a word, though, his father ran to him and embraced him, you know, hugged him and welcomed him, welcomed him home. When people think of Noah's Ark, people think of a boat full of animals. What we need to think about is the prodigal. God showed us through the flood that he will not give up on us. He, like the prodigal's father, is waiting for his children to come home and be forgiven. I don't know what problems and pressures you're facing now or what you may face in the future, but I know this, no matter what you do, God will always love you. He will always be there for you, waiting to welcome you home, and he will never give up on you. All you have to do is accept his free gift of salvation. Because we're sinners, right? We all know this. We talked about sin and sin was everywhere in the world. Well, it's everywhere in the world again today. And we all do things that are bad, right? That aren't good. We, we lie, we say things that are not nice, we think things that aren't nice, and, and that's sin. God can't have sin near him. But God came up with a plan to save us once and for all. Do you, do you know what that is? That's right. He sent Jesus to come down and pay the penalty for our sins, all of our old sins and all of our new sins, so that we can be with him in heaven someday. What a wonderful, wonderful gift that, that God's given us in this gift of salvation. And if you're listening today and you, and you haven't accepted this free gift, if you haven't said, yes, I, I know I do things that are bad, say things that are bad, think things that are bad, and I guess that means I can't get into heaven, So I, but I want to get to heaven. Who, who doesn't want to go to paradise someday? And you realize that you can't get there on your own. So that means you need someone to save you. So if you haven't made this choice already, do so right now. Say, Jesus, I believe that you were sent here to save me from my sins. And you being God, you raise yourself from the dead on the third day and are up in heaven right now talking to God about me. Please be my savior. Please help me get to heaven someday. And when we pray in a moment, if you pray to Jesus that thing, the prayer doesn't save you, but your faith in Jesus Christ is what gets you into heaven. It's as simple as that. You don't have to do anything special. I mean, other than ask, accept the gift that is being offered to you. That's the only thing you have to do. People may ask, well, doesn't mean I have to go to church every single day and, and I have to make sure I'm the best person I can be? No, you don't have to. I mean, we hope that as you accept this free gift from Jesus that you want to be more like Jesus. And when you read your Bible, you'll, you'll see what God has for you in your life and you'll try to live out your life that way. So if you did that, yes, you'd probably become a better person. 
that you try to walk away from your sin, but we are sinful by nature. So we will continue to do things wrong, to, to sin. But we know that we have a Savior named Jesus Christ that paid the penalty for our sin. So let's pray right now and thank God for his holy word, for his gift of salvation, and pray that we continue to learn from everything he teaches us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be able to come here today and worship you, to learn more about your holy word in the Bible, these wonderful stories that you put in here, the story of Noah, and how, Lord, you didn't know what to do in the beginning of, with all these sinful people. Well, actually, you did. And you chose Noah to continue the human race, Lord. And that you loved us so much, Lord, that you sent Jesus to come and pay the penalty for our sins. Lord, thank you. Please help us to remember that every day. And if there's someone here today that hasn't accepted that free gift, I pray that they accept that gift of salvation right now. That they reach out to you, Lord, in this prayer and say, Lord, I know I am a sinner. And I want to go to heaven someday. Please be my Savior. And they put their faith in you, Jesus Christ, as that Savior. And I pray, Lord, that you be with everyone who's listening to this right now. That you touch their hearts, you bless their lives. Let them know that you are there, you are real, and you never, ever leave us or forget about us or turn away from us, even though we might turn away from you sometimes. Thank you for all you do for us, Lord. Amen. Well, I hope you guys have a great Sunday. We will see you either here online or in person next week. And uh, remember, if you want to come in person, have your parents sign up online so we know who's coming. And we still are practicing uh, all the safe distance stuff with COVID. And uh, I hope everyone's having a great winter right now. Uh, I know it's after the holidays and people get kind of sad, but don't be sad. You have a God that loves you and will never, ever turn away from you. You guys have a great Sunday. Bye-bye.